of uh, Forbes International Tower has really offered us a platform for extreme innovation that makes practical and economic sense, if that makes any sense. You know, we're, we're seeing a, a great shift in photovoltaic technology, for example, and so the Forbes International Tower has a facade that really is its infrastructure. Um, it is a live, you know, living, breathing energy plant. Um, and so it's putting, an, it's giving an output of about 25% of that building's energy that is really unheard of in the building stock. You know, we're exploring new materials or new concrete mixes for low embodied carbon for the foundations and for the cores. You know, we're looking at air systems and the psychology of comfort as it relates to human behavior and how people react to things like glare or direct sunlight or patterns of movement through the sun. So we are constantly learning about these things and we're constantly um, looking at projects like Forbes International Tower to help us take the next step. And we're very excited about that building. It is offering us a new discussion around not just building stock, but cities as a whole. We think that that building will serve as an example to shift the idea of construction from building to infrastructure. And now we think that it's beginning to influence how we think about infrastructure of not just the district, but the entire city. And we think that this project has the potential of serving as a lab for the entire world to come and visit and see and understand how this is plausible, not just possible, but plausible. And from an economic standpoint, um, life cycle, net zero carbon, it's, um, it's very exciting for us. It looks like it's gonna be a fantastic project. Yeah, it's no longer a deficit, it's an asset. Um, and if we thought about all our buildings as assets or contributors, then we would be in a completely different equation around not just carbon, but just the economics around our cities, right? What do we do with that infrastructure, that kind of laden or unburdened um, infrastructure that we now have the liberation to share with everything else? You know. If we're not using it for this building, we can shift it to the other building. Or can the buildings actually be speaking to each other within the context of energy or air quality or shade and shadow or behavioral characteristics of cities themselves? You know, we, we, have, a, we have a tremendous opportunity here and um, we don't take that lightly. Um, and it's, you know, it's very, it's, it's serious work, but it's also a lot of fun and we, we love it. When, when we talk about sustainability, we're really talking about cultural sustainability, environmental sustainability, political sustainability, and definitely economic sustainability. Um, it is extremely critical that that entire perspective is taken from the outset so that everyone understands the equation around economic viability and the life cycle of that project. We also understand that if we seek opportunities where we can reduce the impact of things like the infrastructure that's coming into our city by creating or designing high performance buildings, which we have done, then we can see capital costs go down as well. And so what we're doing is we're shifting priorities. We can save some here and maybe put a little bit more over here, but at the end of the day, it has to be an equation that makes economic sense. Um, that is an ongoing battle, that is an ongoing challenge because we know uh, e economies change, um, material costs differ, um, different contractors have different ideas around what they can offer and what may not be available at the time. And so it requires a kind of management system to always understand how you test these needs against both the embodied carbon and the cost. And at the end of the day, if we see that all the way through, we can deliver the product uh, on target. And that's the goal.